All right, folks, today I am going to put in this new movement into a Howard Miller wall clock. The uh, movement was just destroyed. We couldn't do anything about it. So we'll go ahead and start getting this one prepped and ready to go. Um, just like in all the other videos I show, I always tell everybody, they say they come oiled from the factory, but we always oil our movements. We had a bad run a couple years ago where a bunch of them came not oiled or oiled incorrectly, and it cost us quite a bit of money to go out to probably 40 houses um, in one year because they were slowing down and dragging and not operating right, and they weren't but about six months old. So we're going to go ahead and oil this. Um, I'll have a link to everything we have where you can get the movements, where you can get the oil. Um, I always tell everybody, don't skimp on the oil. A bottle of oil might run you, I don't know, $20, $25. There's a guy out there selling a ton of oil on eBay in large bottles for 8 or $9. And... I've got some proof on some of that stuff that it is just some nasty, nasty oil. In less than a year, it uh, has destroyed these uh, movements. So it's going to cost you a little bit more to buy some good quality oil, but it takes the same amount of time to put this oil in as it does the cheap oil. And with the oil kits that we sell, you're going to get a much better um, control over getting the oil in. And I guarantee you, these, this oil will make your movement last a lot longer. So I'm going to get prepped up and ready to go and uh, oil it. And then we'll show you what we do next. All right, oiling the movements is real simple. Um, if, you oil the, if you order the kit, it'll come with everything you need. But everywhere where you have a bushing and a pivot coming through, you just want to put a little tiny drop of oil uh, some of these are kind of hidden and you have to look real hard to get a lot of them. There are some places that you do not want to oil and uh, some of the hammers and things like that you do not want to get oil on. If you do, it won't hurt now, but it will later on. That oil could gunk up and stop the clock from chiming and doing a few things. So really certain places you don't want to oil but right now we're just getting a little bit of oil in every one of the bushings and then i'll go ahead and flip it over and get the other side in just a moment and then we'll be ready to do there's a few things i want to do before i stick it in the clock but i'll show you what those are so let me get it flipped over and get that side oiled all right so i got it flipped over and we're going to start oiling some of the bushings, pivots on this side. These parts right here, these lifters, the snail, the rack, things like that I don't oil. Um, I've just seen in the past on some of the house calls we go on to on the grandfather clocks that, uh, you know, we'll get a customer or tell us that the Clock's not chiming but one or two times, no matter what time it is. And that's usually because this snail right here in rack gets all gunked up real bad with oil. So if you don't have oil on them, you won't have to worry about having the oil dry out and uh, collect dust. And they're not, you know, they're not, they're not really moving, seriously moving parts. They're just... Uh, they're fine without any oil on them. On this particular movement, um, it's a 1051-030A. There's a bunch of them out there, different ones. But on this particular movement, on the front, there is a stub right here. And if you have a clock with a moon dial on it, you have got to break that piece off. If you don't break that piece off right there, then it'll get hung up, this one right here. It'll get hung up on that moon dial and stop the clock from running. 
I have literally put these movements in clocks with moon dials on them and they'll run perfectly fine. And after about three or four months, they start getting hung up. It took us quite a while to figure out that you're supposed to remove those. The instructions will tell you that, but you know us guys, we don't read instructions. So, all right, let me get this clock prepped and ready to go and I'll uh, show you what we do next. On this particular clock, there's just a trap door, a little inspection door. It just press fits, or not press fits, but it just kind of sits in there. It's very easy for getting uh, gaining access to the movement. Uh, these are the four screws that we're going to remove to drop the movement out. Uh, I'm not going to do that on camera because it'll take too long to show, and plus it's hard for me to have this camera mounted at the same time. So let me get that removed, and then I'll show you what we do next. All right, I'm getting ready to get this thing pulled out so we can install the new movement. Um, there's a nut right here on the hand shaft. Actually, I took my pair of pliers and loosened it. But uh, just take that hand nut off. And I always take a little container, jar, it, it doesn't matter, just anything. And every part I take off, I just put it in there. I'm telling you, it'll save you a lot of hassles from running around looking for stuff. Minute hand comes off real easy. Sometimes the hour hand is a little tough. If you, it just sits on a uh, barrel shaft and it's just kind of press fit on there. If you tug on it and wiggle at the same time, it'll eventually come off. So we got the hands off. Let me get the face and the movement pulled out of there, and then we'll go from there. All right, so I got the movement out. And we'll get to the back side later on. But right now, we've got to get this face off so we can get the face separated from the movement. This brass ring comes off. There's some little stubs, if you see here, that indentations that will hold it on. Sometimes they hold on real good. Sometimes they don't. This one's not really held on that well. But if they are tight, you can just take your screwdriver and kind of pry up underneath there a little bit. It's not a big deal. It's just, like I said, it's just a little bit of pressure. All right, once we've done that, I've got to get these two screws out here that are holding this face on. So let me get these guys out of here. And now the whole face will come off. And I will just set it aside for right now. All right, now we've got these four screws that have to come off. And that's what's holding face plate on so we'll get those guys off of here okay so now I've got those off and we're ready to go our next step is going to be to get these stubs off, here is the new movement, identical to the old movement. So we're going to get these off and we'll stick them on here and then the faceplate will all match up. All I'm going to do is loosen them with a pair of pliers. They're actually quite loose. No big deal. And they simply come off. So we can get them ready to go on to the new movement. So I'm gonna put them on the new movement. Here's where y'all need to be careful. If you take these four nuts off at one time, this movement's gonna fall apart. You don't want this movement falling apart. Uh, putting it back together is difficult. So we're gonna do one at a time, just so there's no problems. And they don't have, these don't have to be super tight, they just, Need to be snugged on there. But 
yeah, trying to put these things back together when they're in pieces is not a whole lot of fun. Because they'll go back a hundred different ways. Only one way to go back correctly, though. Alright, so we got these put on. And we've got the same situation on the back side. We've got these long stubs that we're going to get taken off. And we're going to put them on the back side of the movement. So let me get that prepped and ready to go. And I'll be right back. Okay. Got them all on. All four on the back. And all four on the front. So it is ready to go. Our next step is to put the face back on. However, I'm going to show y'all a trick that's going to save you a lot of time. Oh, it's already wound up, ready to go. This minute hand, can it has a square shaft. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a square hole right there. And that square shaft hole, or the square hole, will go on this shaft. It can go on four different ways but it only goes on correctly one way and you want to make sure that at the top of the hour is when the clock is striking the hour so when the top of the minute hand is up so the way you do that is if you watch these pieces right in here, it's kind of hard to see. This piece right here is being lifted up each quarter hour. And yours might not be exactly on a quarter hour because there's some adjustments to the hand that needs to be made. So, sorry about that. I didn't realize I wasn't in view. All right, so this piece right here is getting lifted up every quarter hour. If you keep going around, you'll see it being lifted up just a little bit but there's one point where it gets lifted up quite high and that is right there. So I leave it there because that is the top of the hour for me on this particular movement. And I'll show you a little later on why that's so important. So let me get this face put back on and then we'll uh, show y'all what to do next. One more thing I got to show you that I forgot is this, this clock actually has a, uh, selector switch on it for the different songs as well as silent it does not come with the stub that sticks out for the selector switch so we've got to take this one off and put it on the clock it'll adjust back and forth on here in order to fit in this hole properly so I'm going to slide it on there just a little snug so I can move it to adjust it when the final part comes. So let me do that and then we'll continue on. All right, so I've taken that selector switch handle off. It's just a small screw that held it on. And I am just going to slide it on there just temporarily. And then I can put the face back on or the this part of the face back on and then when I go to put the face on I can move this back and forth still to get my final adjustments to fit in that slot perfectly then I'll tighten it down from the back so let me get that done and then we'll work on the back part all right so I got this base put back on I figured out where I needed that little stub to stick out and then I went ahead and like I said there's just a small screw on the back side so I got it screwed down and it is ready to go now so now I'm just gonna put these two screws back in and this movement will be ready to go back into its case and then once it's in the case there's a few things we'll have to do to adjust it, and I'll show you how to do those. And then we'll hang it on the wall, get it tested, let it run for a few days to see if it's going to run, which it should. There usually isn't very many problems with them. 
Once it's running for a few days, then this guy is going to go back home to its owner. Um, he dropped it off the other day, and the movements come pretty quick, so we're able to get this back on. All right. Let me get it mounted back in the case, and then I'll show you some of the fine adjustments we need to do. All right. I have got the movement all back in, everything's tight, getting ready to put the hands on. The hour hand, again, it just fits on there, and you just want to slide it down, almost touching the face. If you look real close to the shaft, you'll see part of the brass from the clock shaft sticking up. You want that brass stub to protrude past this hour hand. If it doesn't, and you put the minute hand on, you'll pinch it, and the two of them will be rubbing each other, and the clock will stop. So if you have a problem with it, always make sure that there's a gap between the hour hand and the minute hand. Remember earlier, we talked about finding the top of the hour. So right there, I'm going to make sure that I put it back at the top of the hour. And then I'm just going to tighten down this nut. Got kind of a pain. But I'm going to tighten it down just with my hands right now because we might have to make a few adjustments in a moment. Later on, we'll tighten it down with some pliers. Just gently, be very careful. If you scratch the uh, minute hand, actually, that is the same color as a black Sharpie. So if you do scratch it, you can take a black Sharpie and rub it on the edges of the scratches. It'll be shiny at first, but when it dries, it'll completely disappear. So I'm going to get this thing hung on the wall. We're going to wind the winding arbors up and start it up. And then we'll start making some adjustments according to the uh, striking and the uh, chiming. So let me get that hung up and then we'll go from there. Okay, I got it all hung on the wall. Kind of running out of space here at the shop. But uh, I'm going to go ahead. Most of the time, these hammers back here. Most of the time, they line up just perfectly without any adjustments. I will have another video showing you how to adjust them at one time. I don't think these are going to need it, but you can basically just take a pair of pliers and bend them. It's a soft, soft brass that uh, will take care of that for you. It's on this particular clock, I've got three songs. i got a silent switch up here. I have Whittington, St. Michael's, and Westminster. There are eight hammers back here that play the songs, and Westminster only uses four of those eight hammers. So when you're going to adjust this clock, or a, any clock that has a triple chime movement in it, you want to put it on either two songs, not Westminster, because you want to be able to adjust all eight hammers. Then later on, when you put it on Westminster, it'll be fine. So let me go back and see where we are with this. Oh, I got, I must have it, yeah. Sorry about that, I got it stuck between silent and uh, the first song. So on this particular clock, I got lucky. And I am not going to have to adjust the minute hand. You can see when I pull it back and put it right at the top of the hour, it'll click and start going. If it clicks and starts going at five tail, five after, somewhere now, I'll, I'll have another video to show you how to take care of that. It's just a matter of taking the hand off and, and adjusting the nut. Right now, what I'm trying to do is see if my hour hand 
is pointing correctly. All right, so now I'm gonna count. All right, so it chimed eight times. I'm simply just gonna move the hand to eight. And now, We'll go around and see if it chimes nine. If it does, then we have it set correct. We'll go ahead and put on Westminster. Let's see if it chimes nine times. All right, so I've got that all set correctly. Now I'm just gonna set the correct time and polish the case a little bit. And then we'll watch this for a few days. If it comes out doing fine and keeping up good time, then I will send it on home. On this particular clock, I don't know why, but he's got a broken glass, which is no big deal. We can replace the glass. But for some reason, this gentleman did not want to replace the glass on that clock. So that is the way it's going to go home. I do have some other videos out and I will put some more out on adjustments and fine adjustments and things like that. And I also have a link to where you can buy new movements, where you can buy the oil, the oil kits. I mean, the oil and the oil kits is pretty much everywhere. You can, Sears is even selling it now online, and uh, Amazon selling it, and eBay selling it, and our website sells it, and there's a couple others that do sell it too. So um, I'll also put my email address down there. If you have any comments or questions, please let us know. And uh, hopefully this video has helped, and hopefully the other ones will help as well. Thank you for watching it.